of Captain Eddie Castellan. <clears throat> a little gravelly. Got to get out my prescription to turn. Yep, I got one. I got a prescription that says I need to turn wood. I paid dearly for that, too. But it's time to change eyewear. Get on my safety glasses. Put the remote in my pocket so I have it around. And I want to talk to you a little something. Well, there's some special stuff. You know what you got to do, right? You got to watch. Are you over here? Oh, where? Hey, let's talk for a minute. If you're a follower, listener, viewer, whatever, you know, buddy, you know I really harp on this Freedom Pens project. Freedom Pens is where you and I turn pens and we give them to an organization called Freedom Pens and they give them to our troops for protecting our freedom. Now, it's crazy as this came in the other day, I got this in the mail, and I was looking at the date on it. This came from an old friend, and it says in a little posting note up here, if you hadn't pushed Freedom Friends, this would never happen. And this is from the Colorado Lookout, official publication of the USS Colorado Alumni Association. Now, they got two boats. They do. They got One of them looks like a freaking battleship. Um, I mean, it's big, and the other one's a brand new submarine. It's big, too. But... They got a couple of pieces in here about it, or where these pens came from, and each shipmate received them, and how Freedom Pens worked, and, and all that. These pens that these guys are giving away, I gotta move this so I can get to this and show you. These are made out of teak wood from the original boat, the original Colorado. Right, their deck wood. Went away, went to another organization. They got it from the other organization and turned them out. Uh, turned them out into these pens. Now these were done by my good buddy Ron Radliff. He's out of Walla Walla Lane in Washington. So it was a convenient thing. When I got it and looked at the date on it, I received it on the 25th of August. I was in Waco when I, the package showed up here. 25th of August. That was 50 years ago that I joined the Air Force. 50 years ago that day I joined the Air Force. Wow. It was the best learning experience of my life. And how America has never had the balls enough to make it mandatory to give some time to your country. Give time to your country. Those of us that served understand what it's all about. There are things that we'll never learn day to day that they learned in the military. Ron's a great artist. I appreciate it. Pens, Ron. Want to be in my jacket pocket all the time. He's got a thing here about a guy that when, when he got interred, he wanted his freedom pen interred with him in his Purple Heart. And my wife said, what's that all about? I said, the pen wasn't the pen. The pen was the wood from the ship. That is what it's all about. That is what he put his life up for. He gave his life, put his life on the line for his country, and he did it through that ship. So, just a little something I thought you'd, you'd like to know about. Freedom Pens. If you want to get involved in Freedom Pens, I don't have a phone number for you to call anymore. Just email me at this address, captaindecastellan at gmail.com, this one right here, and tell me I will forward your ad, your information. I need your name, address, and telephone number so I can send it to the guy that currently handles Freedom Pens. And he'll get in touch with you, and y'all can work something out on how to turn pens and make it for our, our boys and girls, ladies, men, our, survive, our, uh, our supporters is what it is. So, I got a whole list of stuff. I mean, look, I got a list here. I got to thank Al DeSoma about some Yuma... Uh, Arizona Mesquite and Sycamore that he, he sent me when I was in. He came from Yuma, Arizona to Waco to bring me some wood. That's a drip. Um, and a few other things. But you know, i got to turn something. really do. I want to get out and shop and turn something. And the wife, the management, came up the other day and she said, Honey, 
she doesn't usually use that term, but as hey you, um, can you make something we can use for Christmas gifts? I said sure, build you a Porsche. That didn't go real good. And I said no, we we can make a wooden handled screwdriver. Well, this is one that's been in my shop for a long, long time. It was not went under water out there for a while in a storage box. But it's a piece of mahogany. And I turned it and did a little figuring on it, a little detailing. Where is the camera? There it is. Did a little detailing on it. Not much. But let me tell you something. You can do this relatively easy. You can go easy or you can go easier. Now you choose which it is. I've got these kits. And I made this out of a kit. And I don't remember where the kit came from. Maybe Penn State or one of those places. I have another one here that's out of a piece of Coca Bolo. Same thing with the inside inserts in. And then you can use the pen. You got a 3 8 nut driver, a 3 16 nut driver, and a quarter inch nut driver on it, or 5 16 whatever. I put a flat spot on it so it won't roll off the table. They're simple to make. They really are. But I'm, we do these things. I got to gear it to you and me. So I looked at the kits in the catalogs and they were five bucks. Yeah, five bucks for the kit. All you get is the um, well, let me show you what you get. You get a handle, and you get this. This is the mechanism. The mechanism. It's the sleeve, the follower, and two tips, which gives you four screwdriver bits. Always are pluses and minus, or pluses and times. They're not standard in Phillips or Prince Reed or anything else. But you get that. It comes in a handle. Here's the kit. Where's the camera? Here's the kit. You see that? That's what you get. Where do you get it? For a buck and a quarter, I got this at Harbor Freight this morning. I bought a pile of them. Um, I got a Phillips 1 and Phillips 2, a 3 16 and a quarter slotted. And there's something here, but I also have a. The, the, the driver itself is a nut runner. That's okay. That's a cool thing. Um, buck and a quarter. You got to watch the Harbor Freight ads because when they're in a Sunday newspaper, sometimes with any purchase, you get one free. It's hard to beat free unless they're paying you to go there. Hard to beat free. You bring it home, you open it up, and you take that little blue handle out. Looks like this. See the little blue handle? Right? That's the handle. Then you take and you cut off, cut the handle in half. Voila. That's French for look at that. All right? Cut it in half. That's going to give me my working pattern for what I need. You see why I got one recess up here and then another recess or hole that goes down through the center. And I am pretty sure I can do all this on the lathe without the drill press being involved. Why? It's practice, boys. It's practice. Okay? But remember when you're cutting this in half, that metal thing in there? It doesn't like the bandsaw blade as much as the bandsaw blade doesn't like it. So you can't do that. You can cut up to it, and then you got to take your, your hammer and chisel. I use my little buck quarter inch and break it apart. And I also, I got two things out of it. I got my center that shall, tells me what I need to make. And also tells me how, well, besides the shape of the handle, it gives me a guide. It also gives me how, the size and the depth of these two cuts that I have to make. And pretty much everything after that is up to me. And you. Stick around. We're going to do this. It's going to come out nice. We're going to get started a piece. That's a piece of two inch mahogany I had around the shop. Alright, nothing special, just a piece of hardwood. I wouldn't use pine or 
I'd use ash. But it's gonna be I want to use a hardwood, okay? Leaves, not needles. Then I'm gonna take a look at the handle I have, and I'm gonna say that that's gonna be my base, and that's gonna be the neck, and that's about where I wanted it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing off. I'm holding it in my one-way revolving chuck, and that holds the piece very nicely. Now if it was square I could still hold it in that chuck. And I'm going to go ahead and put the shield down, close up, okay that's with my parting tool. I really had that puppy locked down, huh? Yeah. Good. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just crack it off like a human, but that didn't work out. That's okay. What it did is give me a couple of pieces. So I can grab this one again and get another screwdriver handle out of it. Okay? So I bought three kits, we had that working. Now I gotta line this back up again. Huh, 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 huh. Let's use the weight. I really meant just let's use the weight. Let's use it for what it's good for. I have a one way revolving center. Now, there's a couple of people that make this tool. The black versions, the silver versions, or stainless steel versions. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. But that's my live revolving center. See it? Bearing in it spins like a dream. Now, if I use the rod and stop it, I can put the cone on it. it takes a second to screw it in. And my revolving center become, has become a live revolving center. You see, now that moves. Now what are we doing? how nice it moves. I love when it slides like that. Now we're going to take and bre break this loose in the chuck a little bit. I'm going to bring up my tailstock, lock it in place, and then bring it forward a little bit. Spin it one time. Look at that. Running true. I need much to convince myself that was true. Then I snug it back down. I was always taught that if there's so holes in the chuck, go to those different holes because it's a friction thing. And you'll come off with a better better grip. Alright? Then I've got all this held up. I can move my revolving center and see how true it came? That's what I was out to do again. Since I was too stupid to cut it all the way through. We gotta start over again. Not all the way over, but just over here. Half inch bit, put in my in my chuck. This is number number three Morse taper in a, in a one way. We're drilling into the center of this piece. I would normally use a force in a bit for this, but I don't have one long enough. So I can make this work if I'm careful about the drilling. And I need to go to within about five eighths of an inch of that, that curl down there. So I'm eyeballing it. I'm going to do that and check it when I get started. Hood's down. Got a little build up, I pulled the chuck out. No problem, we set that back in. I move, move my tailstock up in order to get enough depth.
back to it. Shields up. Came loose again. I gotta find a damn key for this thing. Okay, that's it on that half inch hole I told you about. That'll work for hiding the bulk of the shaft. It goes in there nicely. Now, depth wise, I checked this and I got four inches from the top of the hub to the tip of the blade. So I need to have four inches when I go in here. If I don't have four, oh yeah, I easy got four inches. Look at that, I'm four and a three sixteenths. I'm four inches right on the money. Now that's the depth of the hole, and that's the depth that I need. So it's going to work. What do we do next? Well, all I can go have a beer, but that's not going to get it. Nope. We're going to take this collar and fit it to fit into the end of this. And we're going to do that with just a couple little sharp bits because the bottom of the collar. Is almost that half inch size and the top is about five eighths so I'm going to kind of shape it up a little bit so I can put it in and I want it to be a fairly good snug fit in fact I'm going to hit it with a freaking hammer okay got it okay I've set the, the tool rest back around brought it around top of the tool rest is clean it's one of the things I tell you about you got to keep the top of it nick free because um, if I have a nick up here, it's going to affect my cut. And it really does. So I have that brought around, put my shield down. Use a little sharp tool. See the little sharp tool? Pardon me. You haven't had one of those minutes where you said, look how I do this, and I'm talking to y'all, and all of a sudden I realize I didn't turn the camera on? Yeah, we well, went through that a minute ago. It's okay. For those that know me, I lost part of my mind about four years ago. And uh, I'm recovering, so what I just now did was put my soft touch, this is my soft touch on my revolving center. That is a shop-made piece of wood that's been turned then drilled through a three-quarter ten tap I got at the hardware store right on the corner and it goes on here and that's going to keep me from messing up that, that, that fitting that's in the bottom I can lock it in place bring up my tailstock and I'm running through and that's what I want to be doing running through I've got you in a little bit better position that you can see the soft touch. That's my creation, my name. Go look it up a catalog. Um, and I'm not going to make these and sell them. Um, if you have a, a revolving center like a one-way or a jet or a delta or one of those other ones, that thread right there is three-quarter ten. You can take it to the hardware store and check it. But you just put three-quarter in tap, three-quarter ten tap into a wood. Go down there and they put a little super glue around it to harden up the fibers, then tap it again. Let the super glue dry. Okay, then this is what I want to shape on the outside of this piece. I'm not going to want to go this small right here. Um, can you see that? Where are you at? Over here. All right, I'm not going to go as small as this, but I want to put a little neck on it, just so, and then a little grip, bit of a grip. And it's a simple turn. And since there's no pattern, and I checked yesterday, the judges will never come by to check on you. It's okay if we wing it. All right? So let's wing it. Tool rest is set. Again, at the, the little ring that's on there. Shields come down. Those of y'all that know me, and know of me, about me, or scared of me, don't like me, or whatever, 
I'm doing all this with traditional tools. I didn't use any carbide, and I catch some flack on it. Captain Eddie, you sell more carbide cutters than anybody else on the planet. Yeah? Why don't you use carbide? Because I'm happy with conventional tools. But we're going to go to carbide. 16 millimeter round. Then a little shaping up and a little grind, a little cutting with the, the planer. I mean with the uh, the round. I don't like the tear out to get, so I'm going to go back to a traditional tool and knock it down a little bit. But I want to check and see if I've got four inches clear and I've got about three eighths of an inch left up here. I need that to put the cap on the handle. That four inches goes inside and outside just in case we messed up. I'm going to take a, a skew and uh, my parting tool and shape that bottom up a little bit. Just so we're all together here, I'm going to take it through the grits. Beginning at 80 grit, working my way up all the way through the line. Lightly sand it. I'm not going to skip any grits. Why? Because I don't want to leave any lines in it. So I'm going to go through every grit all the way up to 320, make it a nice pleasant looking piece. It only takes a minute more, but if you're using the right sandpaper, I'm using Cyanide from Vince of Wooden Wonders. It's cut like a dream. I love it. I don't fight it. It doesn't fight me. It did it lose. And we're going to step on up. We're at 180 now. My lake is running a little quick because I have a little motor control problem. But I can work with this. I really can. Oh, talking shape. I stopped it a little while ago. Again, I forgot the turning on and off switch. And I put my hand on it. I like the way that feels. Got enough meat and potatoes here. Tapers off. It's got a collar at the top that my hand will push on. So you really want to check and see if the, meat, if the shape fits for you. Don't go crazy now. Remember, it's a utility tool. I sanded this up to 320. That's very slick. There are no pits and cavities I have to deal with. The edge is nice and smooth. The finish is going to be nice. I don't see any tool rings or marks in it. And that's what I look for, the tool rings and the marks. If they're there, it's because you left them, not me. I brought the 320. Now, the other day I showed a tip where I take all my paper and put it on a strip. But this is new paper I got in the other day, the Cyaflex, and it fits right back in this plastic bag, 80 to 320, perfect. It's out the way, won't get any finish on it. Now I'm ready to put a little bit of a finish on this because I, I want to cut it off and get it off here to finish it out. For a down and dirty finish, it's fairly simple. I splashed it with one coat of sealer. Now I'm going to come in and take my CA super glue and just burn on a coat. Watch the color coming up. Wow. That is a down and dirty, simple, grease free finish. You can do it in a heartbeat. I'm using the Strabon medium thin or super fast thin EMO2. They make it thin and make it heavy. So I'll go to thin. To cut this off, I'm going to use my shop built parting tool and I'm going to gently slice away that end while I can stabilize this other end with my hand. This is my steady rest now. Now we're going to undo, redo, unmake, remake. We're going to play a little bit with this 
to get it finished up. We have this ugly end on it. We're going to take the soft touch off. That's what I'm talking about, soft touch. The block of wood around it, drill the three-quarter tin, treat it with super glue, and then drill, tap it again. Works great. i got a box full of them. I can just find them. Now I'm going to bring my revolving center up. Take my pin out. Bring my revolving center up and touch the center of that that mark. Little light spin. Well, that's running pretty true, but no, a little bit, a little bit of gauge, a little bit of movement on it. So get out the BFR, BFH, hit a little bit. That'll work. Now. I'm holding it in my number one profile jaws, way over here. This, these are from my one way. And unlike Carl Jacobson, where in nine seconds he changes the jaws, in nine seconds I changed the whole chuck. So hey, it works out for me. Now I want to come in and clean this up, and straighten this up. And again, see the little mark on my tool rest? That is my happy spot right there. No, I'm going to be. I'm going to take a. This is a, a bit made by Cindy Droza. I think she calls it the vortex. Very exacting, and I can do some nice cutting with it. That's how we're going to shape this bottom up. You don't want this to be square because you don't want it to hurt the hands. So you know, knock the corner up a little bit. I'm looking at what you're looking at. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'll put a little finish on this. Sand it out to 320. And put the handle back on. And it's finished up. Now look. I was holding it. I was holding it with the shaft that's part of the kit. It's got a little wobble in it, but it was okay uh, because I was using my hand as a steady rest. But this came out all right. I think so. I got a few things to remind you of. Remember, if you've done some nice turning in your shop, and you do nice turning in your shop, I, I'm, I'm not I can take that away from you. And you want to share your photographs of your work with the other wood turners in this group, just send me a photograph to my captainettycastlin at gmail.com address. And when I get the pictures put together, I'll put them into a, another part with another demonstration and, and share some of the finest work in the entire world. I ain't kidding. Now, I took the shaft out. This goes and then handle. It's got a locker there it is. And that makes a wonderful Christmas present for a friend, a turner, a wife, if you're brave, the girlfriend. Um, it's simple. Play with the, the design as you want. Put it in your hand and use it a couple of times. And if you don't like something on it, change it. If you want it to be longer, make it longer. You want to be sure to out of luck. But you can do anything you want. You can do embellishing, uh, burn rings on it. I would normally take this over to the plate and sander and flatten one area, but I've been sick about four years and plate and sander looks like it's sicker than that. So I can't find a way to turn it on right now. I'll get it working. Here's the deal. I essentially had a stroke four years ago. I had brain surgery twice in five days. And the second one sent me into a coma. And it really, it took eight months to learn how to walk. Still don't do much of that. And there's some other things. But there are gaps in your brain that are, they're gone. I know I can do this. I watched all my videos so I can get refreshed on how to do this. 
Now I'm coming back in and I'm learning how to do it all over again. And I'm trying to share those experiences with you. Why? Because this is a fun experience. You should be out there having fun, making shavings, and uh, enjoying the good times. I'm Captain Eddie Castle, and if you need me, you can always get a hold of me at Big Eye Productions. That's www.eddiecastellan.com. I've got the cheapest prices in the planner on carbide cutters. i got tools, I've got templates, i got all kinds of stuff in there. It's all put together by a family-based company. Well, management owns it, I just work here. But if I can help you with something like a screwdriver, I'll be glad to. Oh, projects? She ran across seam rippers in a catalog the other day. Now get this, gang. I don't get the catalogs. She does. And she uses them to pack other stuff to go out. Because it's paper. It's free. She sees the seam rippers. All of a sudden, i got to start making seam rippers. I showed her a, a ink pen I made using the Bic. I'm making those big ink pens. Making rings. I don't wear my bling. Okay, no bling or watches, nothing. See that? See that? Nothing. All right. But I started making rings. And I'm making rings now. Comes up a little projects to keep me in the shop and keep me motivated and keep me going. And it gets me out of her hair. I'm out here, she's in there. <laughs> it works for her. I'm getting Eddie Castellan. I'm making shavings. Well, screwdrivers. I like this. Goodbye, screwdriver. Mama's going to give you away. But it does look good made out of mahogany, boy. <laughs>